what's up? I am Shelby and in this video I want to share with you six lists that you can make to feel more organized and feel more in control of your life. I haven't really been keeping you guys in the loop, but I am at a point where I'm organizing the hell out of my life for my own sanity. I am getting my routines in check. I'm rethinking my approach to my goals. I am redesigning my space and don't worry, there will be videos on all of this stuff. So if you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about six lists that you can make to organize your life. And at the end of the video, I'm actually going to talk about how you can store your lists so that they're actually useful to you because these lists are well and good, but if you don't use them, there's no point in making them. So stick around for that. So the first list that I have made is my weekly review slash planning list. So I may have mentioned before how much of an impact doing a weekly review has had on my life. It's a practice that I've been doing for like years now. And honestly, it has made such a difference in how I feel of a week and how I feel overall. I have a video on how I used to do my weekly reviews. It has changed a little bit, but that video will still be helpful to you if you're interested. I'll link it down below and on a card here. Essentially what a weekly review is, is you sit down, you get intentional, you brain dump all the stuff that is going on in your mind, you take action on things that you need to take action on, and you generally just get your life together in a short period of one to two hours every week. It can also be a time when you evaluate your goals, how you did last week, what you need to be doing more in the future, and getting a little bit more purposeful with the way that you're living your life. Having a little checklist with munchable, munchable, <laughs> what a word. Having a little weekly checklist with really doable, easy, step-by-step -step tasks that you can tick off as you go will increase the likelihood of you actually doing the weekly review and also it'll keep you on track while you're doing your weekly review because that's a hard one. And I promise you it will help you to keep your life organized. Oh no, this has been open the whole time. I'm just gonna close out and we're gonna pretend that that has not been open. Anything embarrassing? Wicked, wicked. I trust you guys. Having cleaning checklists helps you to stop being so overwhelmed with cleaning and also it helps you kind of 80-20 your cleaning. If you're not familiar with 80-20ing, I'll have a link to a video here and down below. When you get intentional, sit down and write out, okay, what do I need to clean of a day to feel comfortable and happy with my space? What do I need to be cleaning of a week to feel comfortable and happy with my space? There are actually a few lists that you can make within this one topic, some bonus checklists, if you will. Firstly, a daily cleaning checklist. There's a website called Unfuck Your Habitat. I also have a book and they have this concept of a 2010, so 20 minutes of working on one specific space and then 10 minutes of resting. So they recommend doing at least one 2010 a day. Then there is a weekly cleaning checklist. So that's vacuuming, mopping, doing the laundry, that kind of normal stuff. Then there is the someone is coming over, what the hell do I do? I need to get this place clean checklist. I would create your list in order of importance. That way, no matter how much time you have until that individual comes over, you can make sure that you're ticking off the high priority things first and not concentrating on the little weird things like scrubbing the bottom of a cabinet that they're not going to see. The next list is a packing list. So a packing list is just a big old list of things that you might need to take on a trip because the worst thing in the world is forgetting something important like your phone charger when you go on a holiday. Now I have an awful memory. So for example, last year I went to a YouTube event and I left my phone in an Uber and then I left my iPad charger in my Airbnb. When I went to Europe, I left my driver's license in Turkey and my iPad in Santorini. Then God, somehow I managed to get these things back thanks to the beautiful humans around the world. But the summary of that story, terrible memory, which is what led to a second type of packing list, which is things to remember before you leave because your memory sucks. If you have a shocking memory and leave your possessions all over the world, like me, then you will definitely find this list comes in handy. The next list that you should create are stuff that you do regularly lists. Someone should count how many times I've said lists in this video. <laughs> a little list. Starting to not sound like a real word, you know, when you say something too much. So for me, I put together a big list of what I need to do to get a video done from start to finish. From the moment the idea comes into my head to the clicking of the upload button. For you, this might mean creating a big checklist of how to put together an essay from start to finish or how to put together a blog post from start to finish. So for me, the reason that I do this is about breaking a big task into baby steps because we know I love baby steps on this channel. I do videos all the time, but I still might get to a point in the middle of my video creation process when I'm like finished doing my video plan where I'm just like, okay, what next? And you get that fuzzy feeling that's just like, I don't know how to move forward with this. And I think that everyone gets that no matter what type of project that 
they're doing. So having a checklist that you can go back to that sort of takes away that fuzzy feeling, gives you a concrete step-by-step -step list of what to do, can really push you forward and make sure that you're always moving on your little projects in your life. There is this thing called goal competition that everyone struggles with. So for example, I would love to create a second channel based on the beginner's guide to politics. I would also love to create a mindfulness course. I'd love to deep dive and start doing yoga three times a week. I have this book that's great on sleeping smarter and I wanna go through every single item in that book and implement all of those ideas into my life. The point I'm trying to make is if I actually tried to focus on all of the things that I wanted to do in my life, I would not accomplish a single bloody thing. A not to-do list is a reminder of the stuff that you should not be prioritizing, the stuff that you need to intentionally disregard in your life. It's not a list of things that you'll never devote your time and attention to. It's the things that you shouldn't devote your time and attention to right now. Of course, a not to-do list should complement a to-do list of the main priorities in your life at this point in time. Next up is a before you leave the house list. So you probably heard of PKW phone keys or wallet, but you probably haven't heard of PKW STL, which is my personal list of things that I need before I leave the house. Phone keys, wallet, snacks, tag, lunch. Every day I look in my bag and I make sure that I have all of those things before I leave the house. Like I literally go over those items. I don't actually say PKWSTL to be fair. I just go phone, keys, wallet, yep, snacks, tag, lunch. Because without those things, I'd be screwed in one way or another. Now let's talk about how to store and work with your list so that you actually use them because that's the most important thing at the end of the day, despite the internal satisfaction that you get from writing your list initially. Firstly, keep all of your lists together in a folder, in a section, in a tag, in a label, depending on what you use. You should only have to go to one place to find all of these lists together. There should never be any hesitation of like, oh, where did I put that list again? Because they're all in the same nice, neat place for you to easily access. Secondly, they should be easy to duplicate. So if you are like a bullet journaler, or you love your paper, make those lists as easy as possible for you to duplicate every time you need to use them. Most of these lists are reusable. They're things that you're going to need again and again and again. So for me, I have an app and I have all of my lists in the one place. And all I do when I need to create a new video is I will right click duplicate list, re title that checklist so that it's like the name of the video that I'm creating then I will run through that list one by one. Same with when I do my weekly cleaning or when I am packing stuff to go on a trip. So I use Things3, which is a paid app, but I freaking love it. It is new. I actually switched from Google Keep when life just got a bit too much and I was like, I need a genuine to-do app. However, Google Keep is great as well as Wonderlist. I use that for work and it's awesome. It has a lot of the functionalities of Things3, but it is free. If you have any other app recommendations for to-do lists, chuck them in the comments below. I'm sure everyone would want to hear them. And my third tip for keeping your list usable is to not be afraid of changing your list because those lists, they exist to be changed. I'm constantly changing my list. My new video list when I'm like, actually, no, I need to do this step over here. Or I need to decide on the thumbnail before I even start planning the video. I'm switching things around, adding new steps all the time because you're not gonna use the list if you don't trust the contents of the list. So you need to be keeping them up to date and relevant. If you liked this video, you're probably going to like my video on eight lists to write to make 2018 amazing. I will have it linked on the screen and down below. Those lists aren't all focused on organization, but a few of them actually are so you're going to like it if you're on this kind of organization kick with me if you're interested in more videos on living a better more simplified more productive and more self-love filled life subscribe to my channel for regular videos thank you so much for watching i appreciate you guys so very much and i will see you soon